In this video, we're going to run a linear regression and calculate a line of best fit, and we're going to do that looking at this data here. This data was taken from a paper, and the paper was titled Correlation of Performance Test Scores with Tissue Concentration of Lysergic Acid Dolthalamide in Human Subjects. And there were two variables that these researchers looked at, and you can click on or go to this link here to, to look at the data yourself and, and read about the study. But basically what happened was there were different levels of LSD, and that's what that drug is there. And they would give the LSD, depending on the different concentrations, to a group of individuals. Those individuals took a math test, math score, looked at their score here, and these are the data values we get. So the average score of those participants and the average um, tissue concentration of LSD. This is an actual study. I'm not sure what the point of the study was, but this was a very long time ago, so um, that might explain why something like this took place. And um, what we want to do is create a, a scatter plot and find a line of best fit to describe the relationship. So I'm going to open up StackCrunch. I've already put the, the data into StackCrunch, the score, the math test score, and the LSD concentration. If we look back quickly, notice that the score is what we're going to use as our Y variable, so this is the dependent variable, and X is our independent. What this is telling us is maybe in the future, if we wanted to, we could predict the test score. Perhaps we wanted to predict a test score if we knew the concentration of the drug that they were receiving. That's one particular um, aspect of why we might label the score as Y and the concentration as X. So when we go back we're going to first create a scatter plot just to look at it. So this is graph. We are going to create a scatter plot. With the X column, we're looking at the concentration, and the Y column, we're looking at the math score. We don't need to worry about any of this. We don't need a title. We're just looking at this. And uh, looking at this, it looks like as the concentration increased, their math test decreased, their math score decreased. That doesn't seem very surprising that as they received more of the drug, their score, their average score fell. That's great. We could save this, and if you needed to attach this to a quiz, you know how to save it and copy and paste it into uh, Microsoft Word or some other program. What we want to do now is to calculate a line of best fit, a line that would com you know, compare the LSD concentration with the math test score. So under STAT, we are looking at regression, and we are running a simple linear regression. It is very important that we put the variables in the correct spot. As we said here, the predict or, what we're using as the independent variable, was the concentration, and what we're using as potentially what we want to predict later is the score. So that would be the dependent. You don't need to worry about any of these hypotheses tests. These are working with, with different and getting a little bit more into actual you know, reliability of whether or not the intercept or the slope of this line of best fit is, is good. Uh, we could also create confidence intervals. We could do constant uh, transformations. We don't need to worry about any other graphs except the fitted with line plot. So that's selected. The only thing you need to do when you are in this screen here is to put in the correct variables and hit compute. Now you're going to get a lot of information that you may not necessarily need. So here we have the, reminds us what the dependent and independent variables were. And then it gives us, right here, it gives us the line of best fit. So I'm going to write this out. It says the score is equal to 89.12. We'll write that part out right first. So it's telling us that the score can be found by taking 89.12 and then adding, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be subtracting. So I can kind of get rid of that. There we go. So 89.12, let's go back, minus 9.01 LSD concentration, minus 9.01 of the concentration. So let's go back one more time just to make sure we got that right, minus 9.01 times the LSD con uh, concentration. What this is telling us is if we know a particular value of the concentration and we plug that into here so let's say I ask the question you know what score could we expect for a participant who received um, a level of three in terms of the LSD concentration 
you could plug 3 into here, multiply it by 9.01, and subtract that from 89.12. So this is how we could predict. We could plug values in for the concentration and predict values for the score. This is the linear, we ran a linear regression. This is a line of best fit. Now the other thing that the stat crunch provides us with, if you notice, it gives us the sample size, and it also gives us the correlation coefficient. Now we've calculated the correlation coefficient already in a different, you know, going through stat and then summary stat. But this, if we run a linear regression, it also will give us that. And if you look here, negative 0 0.93369, that is very strong. It's a very strong negative correlation. In the bottom right-hand corner of this particular box here, you can click on the arrow and it gives you the scatter plot with the exact fitted line that we just calculated. You will, for sure, on a quiz, be asked to provide this. So this is automatically provided if you go into the simple linear regression and just hit compute. And it will most likely be on the second page. So you would need to save this and you know, import it into a document to, to send in for a grade. So please be conscious of that. I will ask you to include this you can see that this line is going right through the data points and could be a good predictor for the score of the math test. Now finally, one thing that the simple linear regression results don't give us, it gave us the sample size, it gave us the line of best fit, it gave us the correlation coefficient, but it did not give us the p-value for the hypothesis test. So to calculate the p-value for the hypothesis test for correlation, we still need to go to stat, summary stats, correlation, we still, this is the only way that StatCrunch will give us the p-value is by selecting both of these variables, clicking on two-sided p-value. We still get the same linear co, or excuse me, the um, correlation coefficient, but now we also have a p-value that if we needed to conduct the hypothesis test to make sure that this indeed was evidence for a linear regression or excuse me, linear correlation, this is the only way we can get the p-value.